Hello and welcome back to The Cock Dice. I'm here tonight with a quick painting tutorial on how I'm going to paint my sister battle army. If you've seen my previous video, I'm going with the blue and white armour scheme that I showed there, and this is an in-progress model. It's about 80% done. I've just got a little bit of highlighter on the black, sort of the gold out and the details as well. So I'm going to show you how to take a model from base coat through to this, and it's relatively simple. First job is get your model built and sprayed. I've used grey sear in this case because I'm going to use a few contrast paints to get the first few layers down. First colour we're going to need tonight is GW's Talisar Blue. I'm going with the brighter colour first on this occasion because it will be easier to clean up the grey after we've done this if we slop it anywhere. So we're going to paint all the cloth with Talisar Blue in a relatively thick coat as you're supposed to use contrasts. So get it on, not too thick, thickly that you're going to completely destroy any of the details. Try and be neat and try not to get it onto the white armour because it makes it a lot harder to clean up afterwards. So there you can see the sort of thickness that we want, so enough that it's going to pull in the recesses because we're going to use this as both the base coat and the shade. So I'll get this finished off and I'll be back in a minute. So there we have the first coat of paint on, it's going to be wet, it's going to take about 10 minutes to dry, so I'm going to pop this uh, last to one side for a minute, let it dry off. Uh, and then we'll be back in a minute to do the next colour. So our Talisar Blue has had a little time to dry and it's on to next colour, which is going to be Contrast Apothecary White. I'm going to paint all the armour in this colour. Give it a bit of a shake. Again, we're using it straight from the pot, still with the medium brush. Just like the Talisar Blue, we're going to put on relatively thickly. I want to get some nice deep grey shade in all the recesses of the armour. I'll try and paint a bit that's actually a bit more interesting. Here we go, we'll do a head. Try not to paint the pipes, we're going to leave them in a different colour. Try not to paint the um, any of the metal bits, the gun. Try not, obviously, not to go back over the blue that we've just done. So, just like that, slap it on nice and thick. I'll get the rest of this done and we'll be back in a minute. So again, there we go, a nice thick coat of contrast paint on it. We're going to give this another 10 minutes or so to dry and we'll be back in a moment. So the contrast coat is now pretty much dry and we'll move on. We're going to move on to our black and for that we're just going to pick out bulk them. Now if you want to here, you could just use contrast black templar and speed it up a little bit, but I prefer a much flatter, blacker uh, colour that Abaddon Black gives and will highlight properly afterwards. So there's the Chaos Black on the bulk one picked out and if you could just give it a few minutes it will dry off and we'll move on to the next colour. So next we're on to the metallics and we're going to start a bit with a bit of the Iron Breaker. It's obviously going to go on all the barrels and the attack bits here, all across the top here, here, down the camera on this one. I do these pipes appear in the same colour and the edging over the top of the um, backpack, backpack, power plants, backpack, whatever it is. And then next we're on to the gain of gold and we're going to use that for all of the shoulder adornments. So the big inquisitorial eagle thing on this shoulder, flood lay on this shoulder, flood lay on the knee down here, focus back in again, flood lay down here on the gun and on the backpack. So I'll just pick these out. If you've got any little knickknacks, you can paint them gold as well. We might just clean up things like skulls in bone colour afterwards, but just get the paint on nice and thinly so you can see the detail through it still. So now we've finished any of the knickknacks and all the metallics, we're going to chuck on some washes. First of all, I'm going to get some uh, null oil onto all of the iron breaker. And then for any of the gold areas, we're going to use everyone's favourite Agrax Earth Shade. Just a decent amount of the brush and slap it on the top. And so shade that gold, keep it really, see that well. keep it really nice, uh, warm tone to it. So there we have it. If you're new to painting or you want to paint the army pretty quickly, that should be battle ready. We've got some shading, general colours all in the right position, italics done. 
you could just paste this up and call it done. We're going to go one step further, so I'm going to give these washes a couple of minutes to dry and I'll show you what the next steps are. So we're back again with sound because I forgot to put my mic on before. We're going to move on to doing some work on the blue. Uh, I found Teclis Blue and Lotheran, Lotheran Blue uh, are really good highlights for Telesar Blue. So we're going to start with Teclis Blue, give it a shake. If you've got a wet palette um, or a, just a palette in general, I would recommend you thin this down a little bit. I'm just going to do it in the pot with a bit of water on my brush. So for this, we're just going to pick out the highest points of the cloth. So areas such as here and down here. Let's pick out these higher areas in a reasonable coat of Teclis Blue. Just work it out. You can use the contrast paints. This is one reason I really like them. You can use them to kind of tell you where to put your highlights. You're just looking at the areas that the contrast is thinnest. And see these areas like here and down here, up here. You obviously want to leave those as dark as possible. Paint somewhere slightly more useful. So this first layer is pretty indistinguishable, but on, trust me, it, it really works very, very well. It makes the figure look like it's painted with lots and lots of layers uh, and more in GW kind of edge highlighting style. So I'm going to get the rest of this blue done and I'll be back in a moment for the next colour. So now we've got a nice thin techless blue coat on there. We're going to move on to Lotheran Blue. And again, I'm going to switch to a smaller brush for this. My Lotheran Blue is quite nice and thin. So we're going to look for the highest points. Now having a good light here really helps. We want to pick out just the highest points along this cloth line. So up here, like so, and down along here like that. And then anywhere where there's a cut, a cut or a rip in the fabric, just pick the edge of that out just gently along there, like so. That's what really gives the blue its effect. It looks fantastic across the table. Close up, it looks neat enough. Uh, in my book, neatness is probably one of the most important uh, skills. You know, you can spend most of your time looking at these figures from mm, four to six foot away depending on how big the table is. So I've moved away from doing really, really highly detailed painting these days to a few key tips and tricks and a neat paint job. Uh, and I, I find that makes really makes the difference. Uh, I paint a lot of figures and so I need a fair amount of speed in my painting. I'll get the rest of this blue done and I'll show you where we get to. So there we have the blue done all over both highlights. You can see it comes out really well on the cloak. Not quite as neat as I'd like, but it will do for this video just to show you the effect I'm after. So next up is going to be the white armour. Now we're going to use three whites and this seems a bit overkill, but it helps get a really, really crisp white um, paint job on your miniatures. First job is going to be go back over it very, very quickly with a bit of grey sear. Then we'll do a very broad highlight with Corox White. Um, this is a really good just off white. And then we'll finally edge highlight with a little white scar, which is a really, really brilliant pure white. Grey Sear is quite a thick paint, so you may want to water this down just a little bit. I'm going to show you on the helmet how I kind of work through these, just to speed this up a little bit. So for the Grey Sear, we're going to go back over the, all the areas we contrasted before leaving just a little bit of grey in the recesses and in the, um, around any of the, the kind of uh, metal bits, <laughs> metal bits, that's just dreadful, um, detail bits and, and raised bits. If anything like the ears and little um, areas that are just raised, I literally just wet brush over the top of them. Keep it really, really simple, really, really quick. I'm only spending loads of time on these. You know, I've got, I think it's 50 sisters to paint at the moment, until the new battle suits come out, then I'll have quite a few more. Um, but you just want to try and get, be catching the tops of the model, staying away from the recesses, keep it as flat and neat as you can, thin it if you need to. 
So as I said before, I'm just doing the helmet here. So we've done our um, grey sear. I'm going to pick up with um, Corax White now. This is a very, very thick paint. Um, it can come out of the pot quite bizarrely sometimes. Again, you may want to thin it down a little bit for this. We're going to do a very broad, quite thick edge highlight of this. This is going to start bringing the model away from grey and much more into the white shade that we want. So again, we're just going to pick up all the highest areas of the model. Tops, points, any big areas between detail, tops of detail. Just keep it quite broad. We're not doing really, really fine highlights just yet. And there we have the Corax White done. That's pretty nice and neat on the helmet there. The final highlight is a bit of white scar and you'll want the smallest brush you've got or the one with the best point. And for that, we are just going to pick out the highest areas. So the very top of this kind of spiked area here and down, just veering away from the top. You don't need to go all the way down. Do the brow ridge. Tops of the arm around the eyes. Pick out the tops of any of these um, little rivets they've got in it. And then again over these areas, just wet brush the very tip tops of kind of grills and edges of the armour. So this is kind of more a traditional edge highlight. Now off the top of his head, I'm going to take a little dab of water into this and just make a bit of a thin, thin glaze just to pick out the top of his helmet up here. His helmet, her helmet. And there we have it. That's how I paint my armour. Um, it's pretty simple. It doesn't take particularly long. Uh, it does require a fairly slim brush and a steady hand, um, but I find it works really, really well and it gives you quite a nice clean white paint with some depth to it. I'm going to get all the rest of the armour done. I'll be back in a minute for the metallics and the um, last little detail bits. So this is going pretty well so far. We've got the vast majority of the main sister done. I'm going to break out and do the base now and then we'll go back, tidy up some of the metals, do the eyes and just finish it off a little bit. So for the base, I'm going to go with a little bit of steel legion drab, a little bit of eshing grey, and I'm going to do the tiles in Carrack stone for now. So we're going to slap this on. It doesn't need to be particularly neat, it's a base after all. Uh, it's a ruined base at that. So I'm now going to pick out the kind of concrete area here, um, just in eshing grey. You might want a little bit of water in this to help it run a little bit better. And just a quick all over wash, wash coat of paint. Try to get it nice and deep into the cracks. Don't worry if we go over previous bits. I never generally worry too much about how neat my bases are. They're there for effect rather than to be kind of works of art in my book. Then for the third colour of the base, we're using some Steel Legion Drab just to do the kind of muddy ground at the base. Um, I'm using this mainly because this matches most of my terrain and most of my other armies they have steel lead and drab bases. Don't worry if your colours blur. Start that sentence again. Don't worry if your colours blur together a little bit here. It all just adds to the kind of grimy, grubby feel of this um, ruined city base. And then last of all, any metallics you've got, just pick them out in something like Iron Breaker. Go as dark or as light as you want to go here. Right, we're going to need to give this a little time to dry because I've thinned the paint down and it's quite watery. So I'll give it a few moments to dry off and then I will chuck a wash on it. And now it's time for everyone's favourite wash, a bit of Agrax Earthshade all over that base. So cover all of them, it'll kind of blend the colours together nicely and obviously shade the recesses of all of them. I find Agrax over grey is a really good way just to dull it down a little bit and make it look a little bit more natural and a little less stark. GW's greys are a little bit uh, severe for kind of basing. Not quite the right colour for concrete and things but Agrax solves all problems. I'll just give that a moment or two to dry. 
So while the base is drying, we're just going to nip over the metallics that we did earlier with a bit more iron breaker and just pick up the edges of each of these areas, just essentially edge highlighting them all. Pick up the highest areas. I should have done this in the other order, but it doesn't matter. Let's skip the usual gold highlight. Now the last bit really to do on this model is the eyes and we're going to use Dark Reaper, Thunderhawk Blue and Fenrisian Grey for this. So get the fine points on your brush and then we're just going to draw a little line forwards like so. Then onto the Thunderhawk Blue and we're just going to start around about the middle, just do the fronts of the eyes here. And then finally a little Fenrisian Grey right in the very corner. highlighting the bottom side of these lenses. They're, they're just very dark grey blue lenses I've gone for on these. Keep it simple, keep that shadow quite nice and uh, deep so you can see where their eyes are. And that's really the sister done. I'm going to finish up the base, uh, essentially a quick dry brush over. I'll show you the top of the base in just a minute. So I'm going to have to wait for this to dry because it's still, uh, as you can see, the aggregate shade shade's still nice and damp. Uh, so I'll give this a few more moments. So the base has had plenty of time to dry now and we will just finish this off quickly. I'm using some Carrack Stone to go back over the base area and we're just going to pick out each individual tile very quickly with a thin coat of Carrack Stone straight from the pot. Just like so. I'm going to get the rest of these done quickly and I'll be back in a moment. And now the individual tiles are picked out, I'm just going to whip over the top of these with a kind of dryish brush. A dryish. Some paint still in your bristles, but not too much, of a Screaming Skull. Just kind of grab the edges. Put a bit of a highlight of these, just to give them a little bit more depth. Like so, just catch the edges. I'll work around the rest of this. And so for the grey, we go through Eshing Grey, onto Dawnstone, and finally onto Administrator. Great, these are just little dry brushes again. We're just aiming to pick up the edges of the um, texture, especially on the greys, because it's kind of mid colour. Just dab it on and just catch the edges of all of this. If you go over the tiles we painted, it doesn't matter because it can blast damage or just muck and dirt, we don't want them to be too neat. Grab the Dawnstone, I'm going to go straight over the top of that. I'm not even going to wash my brush for this, I'm just going to keep going straight over it to get these colours mingled together. Just a dry brush, trying to get in the light. Just a dry brush, catching the tops of these, just go a little lighter each time. Finally, Administratum Grey. Oh, that's thin. It's a new pot. Should have shaken it a bit first. Again, just a very, very top this time. We're next going to do the brown in Steel Legion Drab and Carrack Stone. Same sort of theory again. Mostly dry brush, not totally dry. And just flick the paint across it, picking up the nice texture that we added when we did the bases. If you've not seen how I made these bases, there is a basing tutorial on the channel and I'll link it below about now, hopefully, if this works. Go straight into Carrack Stone here, just a dab on the end of your brush, dry it off on a bit of paper towel. And then just dab it across to catch the edges of this. Don't worry if you're flat catching the other colours, we want it to blend all together a little nicely. Oh, I've done a bit thick there. Yeah. Oh well. Don't do that thick. Keep the paint a bit thinner than that. Like so. Final job here is going to be edging this base with some dryer bark. I tend to use this rather than black. I find it's a little less harsh. And but still gives you a nice dark edge to the base. Now, because we're going over Grey Seer. And Grey Seer doesn't take paint too well because it's uh, it's made for contrast paints. 
you are going to have to do, as you can see there, that's all right. You're going to have to do two coats of this. So I'll get two coats of that on and then we'll just see the final steps. Okay, we are getting close to the end of this model now and I have noticed I've missed something. I completely forgot to highlight the black. So we're going to go through the same three blacks, uh, same three greys that we used a minute ago. Namely, Eshin Grey, Dawnstone and Administratum Grey. And we're just going to edge highlight the bolt gun just gently. And then with Dawnstone, we're going to do the same again, but we're just not going to go as far back. So just take it from the edge. I'm going to do it from the corners outwards. Just give it a quick along these edges. I'm doing this fairly rapidly. Not my neatest. And then finally, a tiny dab of Administratum Grey, just to pick out the details and do the very corners. So as this is a gaming figure and it's going to get handled quite a lot, I'm going to give it a brush-on coat of uh, Vallejo Me uh, Mecha Varnish. Uh, I know it says it's an airbrush varnish, but to be honest, it goes on just as well with a paintbrush. Uh, I don't want to airbrush these because I don't want to ruin the metallics. So I'm just going to get a quick coat. You can see already, because it's uh, over a grey sear, the edges of the paint are just picking off already. So you'll find this just helps uh, set your paint job for the rigours of battle. So now the varnish is dry to the touch. It's not fully dry. It'll mat out a little bit overnight. We're going to pick out all the buttons in Rhinox Hide. Uh, we're going to make these gold buttons. So just pick them all out nice and quickly. And then finally, back to Gaiana Gold. Just pick out the tops of those buttons again. For this tutorial, this miniature is finished. I'm going to leave it there. I'm going to give it overnight just for the um, varnish to settle down a little bit. I do find this goes on when you put it on with a brush. It does go on a little bit shiny and then it, it will mat down overnight now. Um, sometimes it needs a second coat just to smooth it out a little bit. But I think this should be OK. I think general experience says it should be all right. Um, and then I'll get a little video of the model spinning around under some slightly better lighting. And thanks for joining us here at The Clock Dice. Why not like this video and add a comment below? It really helps boost the channel. And while you're at it, if you click on the icon below, you can subscribe to the channel for all the latest updates as soon as they're live. Why not check out some of our other videos and playlists? You can click on the ones on screen right now. Take care and we'll see you next time.